I want to thank Neil Gilman for this opportunity to come and speak to such a distinguished group. I know from in my heart that the best coaches on any level, on any team, at any time, are the offensive line coaches of those teams. Now, sitting at our head table here is a very distinguished former head coach at Syracuse that I have a lot of respect for. But now he's getting around those guys a lot. See, he's coaching the tight ends now over with the Dallas Cowboys. And he's finding out also what this is all about. You know something? When I was coming along, they never had a, uh, an offensive line dinner. You know what I'd like to do here tonight? I would like to stand and give Neil Gilman a round of applause. What do you say, fellas? Let's go, everybody up here. Again, Neil, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, uh, this is a wonderful event, uh, and uh, you know, it's it's a terrific thing that uh, you and your company, uh, Gilman Gear, uh, has uh, put this thing together. This isn't easy. I mean, you come down here, he's, uh, he's out of his element. He's down here in a different city. He done, does this every year, wherever it's at. He gets a, uh, a, a speaker, an NFL speaker. Not that we're any better than you guys, because we're not. Let me just uh, emphasize that to you. Uh, uh, I, I know Alex Gibbs. I love Alex. I understand Alex when he was here, because I've reviewed his tape. Uh, uh, talked about in his world. Well, let me say this. Football is football. And I don't know how the hell that they got taken out of this, Neil, where... Uh, you see, I've been coaching for 42 years. That's not your fault. Uh, but I coached four years on the high school level. Now, Jerry Glanville a couple years ago said that the NFL stood not for long. I've uh, renamed it. NFL stands for uh, No Fun League. Because if you don't win, and you don't win, and, and, and I'm talking about winning when you first get there. There's no rebuilding in the National Football League. And I understand that there's a lot of that now in college football. But just let me say this. There is none in the NFL. I've had a good run at Green Bay. Uh, would I go back? You betcha. i go back in a heartbeat. I love Green Bay. It takes a certain guy to want to stay up there. But I want to say this. This is my seventh organization, the group that I've been with. Uh, the Green Bay Packers are unique. There is great history there. Uh, and uh, I feel proud and honored that I was able to be there and to work with those fine players. You know, fellas, football is more than just a game. It's a game of passion. And being excited, jacked up, enthusiastic. I hear jacked up in a, to a fever pitch now. Like, that's something new. I hear these uh, ESPN guys. I get after Mortensen all the time about that. He's a, a, a friend of mine. Uh, but being enthusiastic and jacked up about the opportunity to coach certainly will always be contagious, not only to your players, but to the staff that you're on. Don't ever be afraid to show that you have a little bit of piss and vinegar in your veins. Let me say this. Those guys that get excited about coaching, coaching day in and day out. You're the key guys. You're the guys that really count. So when you get back ready to go again, and some of you, you know, you have uh, spring practice and what have you. In the NFL, we have these, uh, what they call these camps, you know, where we have to go out in shorts and uh, hell, sometimes we're not even allowed to wear headgears. But they, they call that, uh, you know, they call that coaching that you can evaluate. Hell, I can't evaluate anybody then. I might as well not even be there. All we can teach are some of the, uh, some of the little things, such as uh, stance, line up, split, stances, take off. And, uh, and they are important. Because let me say this about your running game, okay? 
the game of football in the running game is to gain leverage. The guys that can gain leverage, okay, can come off the football with proper angles and so forth. They are going to be the guys that are ahead. I don't care what your offense is. Uh, and I'm intrigued by uh, what West Virginia is doing and what uh, 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 Texas was doing. I, I, I like that stuff. That's that, that's that option football, that intrigues me. That intrigues me because I remember back when football used to really be fun. And I remember watching and talking to Billy Willingham. He's a former uh, offensive line coach deluxe. And let me just say this about old Billy, old cigar chomping Billy. He knew more about option football than any man alive. That was his passion. And to get him talking about it, buddy, he knew about zone blocking. Everybody does it now. The NFL does it. And, you know, we take claim, boy, we're, we are running that inside zone and we're running that outside stretch play. And you've heard a lecture here by one of the very, very best. And I want to say this. Billy Willingham was doing that before anybody even knew that it existed. Well, I was at William & Mary at the time, and we didn't, know two, we didn't know two beans. We were running an offense uh, that Ohio State ran under Coach Woody Hayes. Now, there's a coach. There's a coach for all seasons. But let me say this. At William & Mary, we didn't have those kind of guys. We were trying to figure out a way that we could trick them and still, if, if we could get by with blocking one less guy and somebody could read it and get us to the outside, maybe, because we didn't have any other way to get outside. Well, what we had to do at William & Mary was to call, and Coach Holtz called down there, and our talking was, he talked to Coach Yeoman, that Coach Yeoman didn't want to have any part of that to do with us. He said, hey, I'll tell you what, listen, why don't your coaches get on the phone we couldn't travel down there to visit him. We didn't have enough money. Get on the phone and visit with Billy. Well, Billy would talk for hours and hours. Believe me, he would, he would give you everything. That, and listen, he, I, I remember getting on the phone there and he'd say, now, now, now coach, you got to. And he, listen, before I ever met the man, I knew everything about him. And I knew how he coached, and I, I guarantee I could just picture it. Well, hey, I was so excited about doing that that that's when football was fun. That's when, hey, that's when offensive football had the opportunity to take it to those defensive guys. I mean, stick them good. And anytime you have a chance to stick those guys, make damn sure that you do. Put it to them, put it to them every way that you can. Stick their ass, put them in the dirt, bury them, and then kick the shit out of them. I'm not opposed to what, uh, what that big kid did. He should have stomped on his damn chest. That's what gets me, he stepped on his damn leg. Now, my topic here this evening is to talk about the Green Bay Packers power counter, counter and stutter running game. The stutter running game, by the way, so, you, so everybody's aware of this, is the gap scheme or the counter gap scheme run back to the open side of the formation, usually to, uh, or to the weak side of the formation, whatever way you want to uh, call it. I've always believed that you teach sound fundamentals. Make sure that you pay attention to details or the little things. As I mentioned to you, footwork and angles, no matter what you're working on, whatever your offense is, whatever it is, obviously you want your players to sustain and finish your blocks. But to get those things done, you need to work on those fundamentals. And let me say this to them. They don't like to work on those things. Honestly, they don't. But somehow, some way, somewhere along the line, you've got to be able to convince them that this is the, what it takes in order to be great. Every player, any player worth his salt wants to be great. That's all you have to say. The word great, they all want to be great. Now, some don't want to pay the price to be great. But somewhere on your team, you can find a few that will step up and become what you want them to become. The others will follow along, and you get those others following along, all of a sudden, where you had one, now you might have two. And where you had two, you might have three. But to really get it done is when you got five. And when you got five guys that can do that, 
and work on a consistent basis, now you really have something going. There's nothing magical about the game of football. You either block them, and if you block them, you have a chance to move the ball. If you don't, you're not going to have any degree of success whatsoever. I believe that. Even a guy like Reggie Bush, as great a, 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 a player as he is, he had one play. He had one run in the game. He got outside on a lead draw, and he took it to the house. But up until that time, he was a three, a four, and a five yarder. A three, a four, and a five yarder. One time I looked up there, and he was averaging during the course of the game. They had it flashed up there in the TV screen. 4.0. You think 4.0 would get you the top draft choice to be the top draft choice in the National Football League? No, that wouldn't get it done. And it isn't just about one game. But I do know this. Pat Roll, he did a fabulous job with that offensive line out there at USC. Now, running the football is an attitude, in my opinion. It's critical to how we all win. You, me, everybody else. And I know a lot of times coordinators say, well, no, now listen. Listen, we, 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 we got to establish that uh, passing game. We spend way too damn much time throwing the football. Way too damn much time. And I want to tell you something. The last two quarterbacks I've been with are both Hall of Famers. Dan Marino and Brett Favre. They don't come any better than these two guys. But if you don't get everything just exactly right, here Favre is, a damn first-time Hall of Famer, I guarantee you. They don't come any better than this player. He is as competitive and tough. He has the mentality of a damn linebacker. But that's how he was throwing the football this year, too, as a damn linebacker. <laughs> now, I told him one time here, just late in the season, I said, Favre, you know, I had Vinny Testaverde when he was a rookie. I'm, uh, and he didn't get to play much. The reason he didn't get to play much, he couldn't learn the offense. I said, but the next year, he learned enough, just enough, just enough to throw 35 interceptions. You're close to approaching that. You can't throw the ball into double coverage. But you know something about the passing game? You can't let those guys back there. You can't let those quarterbacks get hit, because if you do, if you let them get hit, the first thing they're looking at is they come back out of their drops. Isn't downfield to read the coverage. They're looking up front there to see who the hell has escaped. Believe me, I'm telling you the truth there. Now, I know this about the running game, and I want to say this to you. If you talk to all 32 defensive coordinators, if we had them in here tonight, in the National Football League, and ask them what their first priority would be. It isn't stopping the passing game. You ever hear one say that? Never. Never heard one ever say that. You know what I always hear them say? We've got to stop the run. Why do they want to stop the run? If they stop the run, then they can lay back there, and they can read those quarterback eyes, and they can sh shut those skinny-necked wide receivers and shove them into next week. And you know what? The passing game goes to hell. Now, certainly you can make big plays. I believe in balance, see? That's what I believe in. And you know what balance is? If you have 25 runs, you have 25 passes. But if you have 25 run passes and only five runs, your ass is in trouble. Make no mistake about it. Your ass is in serious trouble. So you got to plan your work. As you're getting ready here, you've got to plan your work to be able to do both. It takes toughness and determination to play in the offensive line. But more important than that, it takes a whole hell of a lot of execution. And that means working on the little things, the fundamentals, the steps, and so forth. In the year 2003, which is a couple years back, fellas, the Green Bay Packers set a National Football League record with 53 runs. 15 yards or more. Now, you know something? That record's been broken since. That record is bro was, as bro was broken this year. But that was a hell of a feat. That was a hell of a feat. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. This isn't the only thing we do. 
We're going to also run the inside zone. We're going to run the stretch play, okay? We're going to run a power sweep. This is out of a base personnel. This play here, if you watch to any of the playoff games, this is the bread and butter play in the National Football League. The old 96, we call it 96 power. We do not run 97 power. The reason we don't run 97 power is I wanted one guard to learn how to come around there and read it. The first place that I started running this play, well, we fooled around with it a little bit at the New York Jets, but where we first started really running it, and running it with some degree of success, was at Miami, the Miami uh, Dolphins. Believe it or not, when Jimmy Johnson says he wants a running game, he wasn't kidding. He wasn't fooling around. He wanted us to get our running action in gear and making it work. But here we go. This is a simple play. Everybody in the room here knows how to, to run this play. What I want to talk a little bit about, number one, we only run the play to the right. And as I was saying, we want the left guard to get all the reps on the read. There are two critical calls. This first one I'm I have down here is the locket call made by the tight end. Inside there, any time we have a two or a three technique, as you see there, that starts off, that's what we call a three call. A three call, you could call it a deuce it if you wanted. You can call it whatever you want. There's, there's many ways to do this thing. You be yourself if you're going to put this play in, and you coach it up the way you best know, and, and I guarantee you it will be a play. But one of those two guys, the guard or the tackle, are working back to the backside linebacker, the wheel linebacker. When the locket call is made, the fullback is responsible for the buck or the Sam linebacker. I know that we call it a buck, but a lot of places they call that the Sam linebacker. When the locket call is made, the offside guard pulls, and he is responsible for blocking the mic. But the locket call is the key call. When the locket call is made, that guard has got to know that he is coming around tight to the double team, and he is going to read the tight end's block up to the mic. Many times he's pulled around there where he has chipped off the end. But we teach him this, if the end is coming down hard, if the end is coming down, you go around. That's the only thing that we taught that guard. And he had to see the reps because when that occurred, that's what we wanted done. The Z receiver, okay, we would do this. We have right up here, you see strong right zip. It doesn't matter what this play is run against. If they're going to put eight in the box and they bring the free safety down weak, the quarterback would bring the Z over to block the end man or the emo player. When that occurs, then the tackle knows that when the safety comes down, he is releasing up inside to block the safety. So it doesn't matter. Eight man front, seven man front, however you want to do it. But the key block and the key stuff on this is the locket call. Let's go to the next one. The next one here, and this again is 96 power. This is being run versus two tights. We call this formation green right tight jazz. The fullback is going to move a short distance there to the, for, to the play side. And again, now the call that we're going to make, the key call here, is a gap tray. The gap tray is between the tackle and that tight end. They are going to work on that end up to, in this case, the wheel linebacker. Why the wheel linebacker? Because the center, when you get this formation with an eight-man front look, with the free safety down, we have him, the, the, the center is going to make a spot call, S-P-O-T, all right? And that tells the gap tray people that they're going to block up to the wheel linebacker right there. The call inside is odd off, meaning that he's telling the onside guard, no help. you got to block that guy by yourself. And on the back side there, the cat call, he goes odd off, cat. 
Cat is between the center and the tackle. They're going to work up to the free safety, and one of the key blocks is on the backside by the U tight end. Now, these are simple little things. This came right out of our playbook, uh, and I've, I put this on a PowerPoint to show everybody here tonight. Now, the reason I'm moving along here a little fast is I got these plays on tape that I want to show you. I want to show you uh, that, that not only, and then we can talk a little bit more about the footwork, the techniques, and so forth. Everybody might be saying, why are you talking about what is a gap tray? Well, a gap tray means that the, that, that, that right tackle is always going to step with his inside foot. He's not ever. And if I ever caught him, I would skinny his ass. He does not. He does not. The guy's out here wide. He doesn't step out here. Why not? Why wouldn't he step out there? What's going to happen when he steps out here? The key that I found out what happens is that that defensive end is he's worth the shit, and he is in our league. He will step out there with you, which means he's going to shut it down, and there's not really a hole to work through. Now, what does that tackle? What do you have to teach that tackle then? He has to know when he steps inside and he gets that second step down, all right, that he's not just going to leave that tight end by himself. He has to have patience. Now, to get that all done, that's why it's only run to the right. Now, you, you may say, well, we can get it done to the left. If you can, more power to you. I'm just going to tell you what we did at Green Bay. That's what I'm trying to tell you here. So there's a gap tray. And now what we're going to do is, in this particular case, left guard pulls around. He has to read. If you put that back up there, he has to read the fullback's block. I'm going to tell you right now, you know what the number one thing is? You're going to play, you're, and everybody marveling right now at the uh, Chicago Bears. I will tell you right now what they're going to do here versus this look. That buck linebacker is going to come down, and he's going to wrong shoulder that fullback. Don't let that be a deterrent. That don't, do not let that be a deterrent. But your fullback's got to know that so he can take him on square at the line of scrimmage and knock his ass into the line of scrimmage or further down into the line. Now, when the guard hears that gap tray, he knows now he must read the fullback's block. If the fullback blocks the buck linebacker down inside, then he comes around to trap the Mike who's scraping over the top. That is football. That's what they do. If the buck linebacker plays outside and he kicks the buck linebacker out, then he will pull up inside tight to block the mic. Does that make any sense to you? Okay. All right, let's go to the next play. The next play I'm going to show you here is a complementary play to the power. This play we call 96 power low. We don't run 97. We run 96. All right, again, now the tight end, and we always do this with two tight ends in the game. Always run this play with two tight ends in the game. The tight end and the U tight end will block inside. That's called a quad. And what we try to get done right here now, again, this, the, the center is going to make the spot call, and that's going to put the, on the load play, off of the, Little deal we got cooking right there. The tackle is going to work back to the free safety unless the wheel linebacker blitzes the A or B gap. Tight end's coming down, and that U tight end is coming down to make sure that the Y tight end has secured that block, and then he is working back to the wheel linebacker. The fullback's responsibility is to block the end man on the line, the emul. He will try to kick out the buck. And now the guard pulls around for the mic. You say, nobody's on the corner. Nope, nobody is on the corner. Well, let me say this. That corner better be one hell of a football player. He better be one hell of a football player, which you're about to see here. Because if he's not, he misses that tackle. The next guy down the field there is about 15 yards deep. That's the free safety, okay, or the safety. And now it's going to go the distance. Believe me, we have had as many big plays on this play as we have the power. 
This play had six in 2003, six plays where they were 15 yards or more. Some of them were on third and one. Some of them were on third and one, but it's a great football play. It is a pure power football play. Now, one of the little things that I forgot to mention here early on here is that the back always has the opportunity, the back, to check the A gap, but then once he checks the A gap, because a lot of times what you'll get is you like you may get the tackle penetrating the strong side and the other tackle coming over the top. When he does that, there is one hell of a big hole on the back side. And you know, at first, we, when we put this in, we used to tell the back, hey, you have to follow that guard. You ought to get on that guard's hip. Once you get through the first line of defense, okay, then, then you're on your own. You can use your, all your skills. Well, when we found out that Minnesota, the Vikings, to try to stop the power play, were running these TT games, okay, running them all the time. I remember Hovan running his that. Well, to fix that, when we started just taking a brief gander with the back and checking that on the backside, you would be shocked. We had a kid this year by the name of Sam Khan Gatto from Nigeria. You see, we lost our first four running backs during the year. All of a sudden, I see Sam Khan in there. I'm thinking, holy. Boy, we're our asses in real trouble now. Well, he was, he was an amazing individual. He picked that up just like that. We're down here at Chicago. They're number one in everything at that time. That was about the December 4th or 5th of this year. And we are trying, believe it or not, to run the football. They had not given up a 100-yard guy all season. And... Uh, we get fooling around there. The Bears take up, and they get three. Three nothing. Now they think they're going to win the game. Three to nothing. They haven't been scored on. Uh, or uh, they acted like they haven't been scored on. But uh, we get going down there, and all of a sudden, we call the power, and old Sam Con takes one out the back door. He not only took it out the back door, it goes down the field there for 36 yards. And now we're down in there, and we kind of punch that thing in, and we're up seven to three. And uh, they kind of fool around with that great passing attack that they had at Chicago and uh, uh, flipped one down the field there on us. I think somebody fell down. Uh, they had ice in their shoes or something and uh, they, we finally stop them and it's now seven to six but we get going again. It's right near the half. I don't know if any of you saw the game. We get down there and it's first and goal on the three. We're fixing now to go on in. We're, gonna, we're either going to kick a field goal and go on in at halftime ten to six or we're fixing to go up 14 to 6, and now we got the upper hand. Well, we have a shovel pass called. The son of a bitch is so wide open that uh, uh, I could have uh, waltzed into the end zone. But Farvey feels pressure coming from uh, uh, the back side, away from the shovel, and he pulls up to throw to his ex-receiver, who's running just a little stop route out there, and he throws it out there. All he has to do is deal it. But he did. He threw it out there, and that son of a bitch took it back. 90, 98, 99 yards down to the three-yard line. They didn't have enough time to score. They would have, but they kicked a, a field goal, and now they're up on us, 9-7. to seven. That's how momentum can change. Just a simple play like that. But I wanted to mention that power and that point I was making there because old Sam Congato... Uh, he could do it for us. Now, we're going to put up here the power load now. Uh, uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, this play here versus an under front. Let's, let, let's step it up here and we'll go to the uh, over front. This situation that you see right here where the buck linebacker tries to cross the U tight end space. If you're coaching this play up, you've got to tell that guy right there that the Sam or the Buck linebacker, whichever way you like to say it, he can never cross that U tight end's face. If he does, you're in trouble. You are in trouble from an offensive standpoint. We work on that. We're going to get reps on that. We're going to do that. We're going to do it on the boards. 
We're going to do it during the practice. We're going to do it during the walkthrough. We are going to do it so that that you guy knows and understands that that can't happen, okay? That is a key deal right there. If that occurs, he kicks down there on that, uh, on, or he blocks down on that buck linebacker or Sam linebacker. Now the fullback will kick out on the corner and the pulling guard pulls around now and he's going to block the mic. That has been an excellent play for us in the past. But the key coaching point again is that the Sam linebacker cannot, cannot. Now we've had a call in there. We've game planned it where, we, where, where that guy would get uh, a, a little, the, the, tight, the U tight end would say, well, hey, I'm not sure if he's going to come inside or is he going to come off. We didn't give a damn whether he came off his ass. But he did, what we didn't want is for that guy to come down inside. So that first step he takes, that first initial step, he would take that step and then he'd get that second step in the ground. Once he learned how to do that, we never had another problem. Early on we did. And we would game plan it because we weren't sure if, because he couldn't do that, that, that little thing. First step and get your second step in the ground. Couldn't do that. And this guy we're paying millions of dollars to. How the hell can that be? Can't do that. Well, he couldn't. And uh, so one of the key things that we had to do there was to make damn sure, make damn sure that we got that. So at first we used to say, hey, you're not sure what he's doing? Make a solid call. You make the solid call, that means he's going to block that Sam or Buck linebacker. He's going to base drive that individual. Now, that meant that the other guy, the fullback, would read. He would read off of that block and block the corner support. And then, of course, the guard. But when we really got good at doing it is when the tight end got that second step down in the ground. Okay? You will see, we'll show you some of these as we go. The next play on the PowerPoint here, this is the same power load play versus an over front. All right? Pretty good play. It's just like the power. And you're going to have a corresponding play that you can take back to the other side because you've got to have something. You know, you don't want to just move them over there. You say, hey, they'll stop that damn play. We'll let them try. That's what we want. We want them to try to stop it. There's been many a damn good football team that tried and couldn't get it done. So, uh, uh, and uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at that. This right here, this play for everybody concerned, this play here, the quad blocks on between the Y and the U. They're blocking up to the middle of the three linebackers, which is the Mike. We got the three call back to the Will. We got the uh, fullback kicking out on the strong safety, and the guard's pulling around again, reading that fullback's block, reading the fullback's block up to block the buck or the Sam backer. All right, now we're going to take it over here to the counter gap play. I drew this play up here. This is a complementary play, and this is what we used to do with when I was at the Jets. We used to run this play. And Coach Sherman, he loved this play. He liked this a lot better because the, in, the, uh, in the power footwork, the back would only do, he would take a rock step away and then go. This one here, the back actually takes two steps away from the hole. He liked that action. He thought that it timed up better. But we couldn't do it on the power. We tried. We tried to use it all the same. Didn't work. We didn't have nothing. So when we, we start talking about this, this was a complementary play to the power. We had to have something out of a weak formation. You can do it out of green. You can line up in strong and, and jazz your fullback weak. But this became a pretty darn solid play. I drew this one up here versus a, an overset. It is the same blocking as the power, except now the guard and the fullback are going to exchange assignments. What are they going to do? Well, in this particular case, the guard is responsible for blocking the end man on the line of scrimmage. In this case here, versus a uh, over wide boss look, we call that, we put that into a different uh, deal there. We give them numbers. This would be a 53 wide boss if I was talking to everybody on the Green Bay Packers staff. 
or player. Any offensive player had to know this, what we called this. Everybody. Now, we got a little lax this year, and we said, oh, you know, we got a bunch of guys in here. We got, the, we got our sixth different back in here. Hell, he can't. And, you know, now, now all of a sudden all things went to hell. Don't ever allow that to happen. Even if it is the sixth guy, his ass is going to be, get paid. He has to learn it. He has to learn it. That's, a, that's what I learned this year. The counter gap, as I said, the guard and the fullback switch assignments. Now, th that's the look right there. There it is versus an underset. We're, we're taking a look at this thing here. This one is being done out of two tight ends, a Y and a U. We would call this west right, U left. We're bringing the guy over. If they happen to be bringing the free safety down weak, they're rotating over there because we're bringing that U guy over. This becomes a damn solid football play. A damn solid football play. But again, we're only running this play, as I said, to the right. Now the guard is pulling. He's going to block the buck or the Sam linebacker. you got your gap tray inside. The call on the backside is odd off, and the backside tackle will hinge and pick up. That's that particular play. So you saw it versus a base personnel out of weak, and here it is out of two tight ends. We call this formation, as I said, west right, you left, and there you go with that one. We'll take a look at that one a little bit later on on the tapes. The next one I'm going to talk about here, and then we're going to get into the tape, is the stutter. Now, this play is only run to the left. And this is the play that Marco Rivera made famous. Marco is not a great athlete by any stretch of the imagination. But he would study what the opponents do over there, and he'd know what that defensive end is going to do and, and how, it, and he would get the defensive ends when we were practicing, he would tell them exactly what they could do. Maybe it's two things or three things, but he would work on that during the week of practice. I didn't, ha I didn't have to do much with this. It's very similar to any gap play. And a lot of times when you're running this play, the key is, do you have a guard that can pull over there and is not afraid to shorten his neck to block that defensive end? Most of the time, that defensive end is going to come down and close. We told Marco, you are going to pull and you are going to trap that defensive end. If you can hit him hard enough, you don't have to worry about logging him. He will log himself naturally. And that's what we got to. The whole deal here was this. Our role in this play is that the onside tackle, the left tackle over there, will always leave two defenders. That's one for the guard to trap, and the other is for the fullback or the U tight end to block. Now, we have run this particular play from almost every imaginable formation. It's a hell of a play. One hell of a play. I guarantee you, uh, and this play in 2003 had more big plays than any play in our offense. This play had 12 plays out of the 53 that had 15 yards or more. Now, that's a hell of a deal. So what we're talking about here is if you're running this play from a base formation, strong right close, just the same way that you were running the power earlier from strong right zip. Now they can't read your mail, but you have to be good at doing both of these. Now, you say, is this part of your complementary running game? No, this is not. This is what we have had in, our, uh, in at Green Bay. We have been a zone blocking football team. We've had the inside zone. We've had the outside zone or the stretch play. We're like everybody else, we have run the blast play or the bob play, whatever you want to call it, to the open side, okay? Everybody runs that play. All right? We have run a draw. We've run a one-back draw. We've run a two-back draw, okay? We have also run these plays here that I'm talking about, these gap scheme plays, because we never wanted to be caught in a game where we didn't have something that we could go and attack our opponent with, all right? And 
Then again, the last thing we would have is one of those sweet plays, okay? That the big power sweet play that I was talking about. Everybody uh, pretty much runs that play now. Okay, fellas, here we go. This is the power play. This is our offense, okay? So here we go. He is going to follow the guard. In other words, wherever the guard goes, that's where he's going to go. Now, he does have the opportunity to peek at the A gap in case they're leaving that guy and running over the top. And he can take it out the back door. But then once, once he starts downhill, he's going to get on that guard's hip. Get on that guard's hip. Don't dip until he takes you through the hole. Once he takes you through the hole, then it's all yours. This is Nigel Davenport. And we're going to go through all these powers. This is green, right, tight, jazz. Okay, here's the first one. Coming up again. There it is. This is a gap tray. All right, here we go. Here's Nigel coming up through there. This is out of green, right, tight. Let's, let's look at all these, and then, uh, then we'll stop, and we'll go back and talk about e this. This is against Detroit. Okay. It's nice to have a player like this. This year, uh, this season, he rushed for 1,876 yards. Scored 14 touchdowns. He's had two of the longest runs in the National Football League. He's had a 98-yarder against Denver, and he had a 90-yarder against uh, Dallas uh, in 2004. It's against Kansas City. They're in an over. Boss, look. We're bringing the guy over. This guy's coming over. He's going to work here. This guy's going to work up here. The tackle is to work on this uh, on that safety. Here it is from the end zone. They're coming down. We made the spot call. Now we're cooking. thought you might like this one. Like I said, it's nice to have a back to make things work. That's against the Vikings. Now the guard misread this one. Okay, take it again. Okay, here's this fancy one. The fancy Dan. This is the one I was just telling you about. The, the guard misses. He spins out of this, comes back around on the other side. What he's doing is reading if the safety comes down, and, and then, then he's going to release up. Otherwise, he's seeing the safety come. Can you see it there? But the safety came back up, but he's already, because the quarterback has brought the guy over, he's releasing uh, up the field there uh, to... Uh, to get that particular player. And here it is versus Seattle. It's his responsibility to block the uh, uh, strong support. Now, a lot of times what has happened, Larry, is that we tell him if, the, if you can't get the strong safety, you block the next defender inside, which could be a linebacker. Now, they don't like to hear that. Now, one of the things that we've worked hard on here is that these two guys on this three call of taking over and blocking, where this guy will take two steps, one, two. You'll see him take, take this step right here, one, two, and then he will turn back so that we can get the tackle up. We found out that it's better to get the tackle up than the guard because if that guy pushes on that guard. So we, 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 we teach actually a torque situation with that guy right there. Here's the tackle getting up again, okay? Here's the power load, very similar. Here it is versus the Chicago Bears. 
Third and one. They have eight, maybe nine in the box up here. I don't know. But that's a safety. There's our lacquer. Uh, there's our backside uh, guy right there. And there you go. And of course, Erlacher catches us, I believe, on the back, from the back side. That's what you like to get. Guard comes back around, back through there, and waylays it. Now we're going to come back here. I'm going to show you two of them. This, this is the second game of the year. This is a playoff game right here. Okay, I'm going to see it here. Not too much. Not too much, Lair. His question was, how much do we hit it in the A-gap here? We don't hit it a great deal. As I said, this is versus uh, uh, the Eagles in the playoff game of uh, uh, 2003. Uh, this was a, a, a critical deal here. When we played these guys before, you'll see it on the next time I show you this, which is the ne very next play. The tight end base blocked on the buck linebacker who was right up here. When we went to play them again, we said, hey, we want you to release inside, okay? We want to cave everything in here and have the fullback and the guard kick out or trap something over here and let the uh, halfback hit this thing right off the tackle spot. This is what happens right here. Pretty much the way we drew it up. Now, what happened is there was that corner. Remember I was telling you about that corner? Don't give them all the credit in the world, fellas. Here we go. Third down and one. Right there, it's about the 36, 37 yard line. And he takes it right on down here to about the three. Eight, well, they cut him out at the four. We did not score on this drive. It's a damn shame. Okay, here it is here. This is the one that I was telling you. The cuts back up inside. Great job, uh, okay. You'll see it here from the end zone. I'm not going to screw with it. I finally got it there. So uh, we'll try to show you this. This is the same thing against Philadelphia. That's where he loaded it. Okay, made the uh, solid call. Okay. You want to see that again? I'll try to... Uh, Drop back here to it. Yeah, he solid base drives on this guy right here. Okay? And that was game plan going into the game. And then we changed it when we played him the next time. Uh, does he use? No, he's trying. What he's going to try to do there is to, he will rip his outside arm up into the defender, okay? And use his hands to try to torque him. Back to the inside, yes. There's the counter gap that we talked about. Okay, we'll take a look at this one here. That's really the counter gap load, okay? Here it is out of view, green right west. Yes, he is. He's at eight yards. Here we go. We'll see it here again. It's coming over. Okay. Tight end track blocks. Tight end is to track block anything down in his way. Okay. Track blocking means he's going to come down through there. Okay, he's going to latch on. Now, this is a team that played for the NFC Championship that these plays are being run against. And now we're going to the open side here, okay? This is a stutter play to the open side. Okay, meaning that we're going to attack over here to the left. We 
running over here to the left side of the formation. Run out of gas there. <clears throat> it's against Oakland. This is the Monday night game that Brett Favre had the fabulous night on. They're going to allow two, but he takes the guy that kind of blitzes down inside. And the fullback didn't make the adjustment to come up on the next next guy, but it didn't matter because he missed. Okay? Taking two. Say it again. Tackle was patient. We knew that when they brought the wheel linebacker up on the line, they're coming almost 100%. It's a, it's a, a simple tip. That's against San Francisco. This is the backup, Najee Davenport. The thing about it is this left, uh, right guard pulling. That is a fabulous job. I got to show you that. Here it is again. Good job by the te by by everybody there. That's you know. Uh, This is what we call the open side of the stutter play. Here it is again, San Francisco again. And of course, this is the horse. It has been a very good play for us, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, we couldn't run it worth a damn this year. We didn't have a guard that could pull over there and get this thing done. So that's why I was saying, hey, the only as good as what kind of block can you get. I'm going to show you this because this is against a, as good a defensive football team as you'll find. This is what they call the wolf blitz. People said you can't do this. We said you can. This is versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Take a look at this. This is the Wolf Blitz. That's the free safety. That is uh, Lynch. That's Lynch, the free safety. Okay. That is the wheel linebacker right there. All right. Now, we know that over here, that when they would do this, okay, they're going to bring this guy back. He's going to loop out. This guy drops. And then he may chase, okay? We knew we had to get this thing blocked over here. As great a player as this uh, Brooks is, and he's a great one, okay? We just ran this damn thing up in there so much that he got tired of making the tackle. Now you say, oh, you're, you're lying. No, I'm not. This guy right here is a great pass rusher. He's just an average run defender. At best, I'm probably giving him too much credit there. Okay? So we're going to wear his ass out. Now, I didn't have to motivate this guy too much because the year before, he damn near got put out of the league with a cheap block from uh, Mr. Sapp. So this is the next year, and we're going down there with one thing in mind, and that is to physically kick the shit out of him. And that's what we did. Here it is. They're running in there. We hammer old uh, Lynch, and there we go. Now, they're counting on that play being dead. But old Brooksy there didn't make the play. So don't give them, always give them too much credit, you know, as you, as you go down through this thing. It's been my pleasure to show you a little bit of Green Bay Packer gap schemes. 
that I appreciate your attention uh, and uh, your attentiveness. Hopefully you got something out of this, but uh, no matter what you run, uh, believe in what you're doing, have confidence that you can get it done, and teach those players like hell. And remember what I said, it's all about footwork, believe me. It's about getting them in the proper stance. You know, in whatever stance you think is proper, okay? Uh, every, everybody ain't going to teach it the same way. Uh, everybody ain't going to teach pulling the same way. But whether you do it the same way or not, the most important thing is to build the confidence in the players that are going to do the playing for you, and then things will happen the right way for you. Uh, you don't have to do it the way I do it up here. Hey, and I guarantee you, your way is just as good as my way. Uh, and, and I mean that. Uh, there's lots of ways to skin the cat. Uh, I'm just telling you how I believe and what I believe in and, uh, and trying to get it done. Uh, but uh, You've been a very fine audience, and, uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.